One second. Okay. All right, we'll continue and then they'll join in afterwards. So uh, yeah, so then we'll go through the, so mission, um, like I said, I'll go through this very quickly, but it just kind of confirms what we've, um, maybe why we're a little bit different in terms of what we're trying to do. So we, we focus um, obviously on building the player technically so they could play, you know, in, in colleges and things like that. But more importantly, want to make sure that they are developing into a good person. I think, um, you know, a lot of times, a lot of clubs are just looking at you as a number to just, um, you know, use you to win games and whatnot. But for us, we look at each person individual and each person situation, um, you know, separately. So that's kind of one of the differences with us, because like I said, we, we focus on developing their so social, psychological, um, physical and technical skills and really to prepare them to play, whether it be in professional teams, pro academies, colleges, and even if they're not playing in those um, environments, just even to be able to go to college and, and you know, move on. That's kind of what we're, um, our focus is uh, to do. I have one more parent joining in. Uh, hey, Johannes, how you doing? Oh, he's coming in right now, one second. Hey, Johannes, how you doing? Can you hear me okay, Johannes? I think he's joining in one second. Yeah, so uh, let me backtrack a second here. Hey, Johannes, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. How you doing? Um, so I'll, I'll just kind of go through, because I only have really more, more two parents on this call, but I just kind of go through what we're doing and um, I just put it here. So we're gonna try to go over what the overview of, of the mission and the value of the club is. I think it's good to kind of get a reaffirmation of what we're trying to do. And then okay. we're going to go through just some of the success stories that I think um, a lot of parents don't know is happening. Um, and then just what we're planning to do with the pandemic. Uh, and the next step is really to college, what we're planning to do with, with colleges to help people prepare for that stuff. Um, okay, so I, I was just kind of, sorry, I was kind of going through what our mission was and in summary and you'll get you'll get these slides i'll give you a link to these slides so really it's just confirming what we do uh and like i said maybe why we're a little bit different in in terms of some of the other clubs because our focus has never really been on um you know i think we've talked about this before getting players to win games or you know you know really just that whole competitive thing of getting a player to win a game because we've been focused a lot more on developing the player uh, just overall, you know, socially, uh, psychologically, technical, technical, to be able to play in, um, you know, like I said, professional teams, pro academies, colleges, even if they don't play, uh, we will, in, in those environments, we'll allow, make sure that they are going into an environment to be successful uh, just in whatever they want to do. So that's kind of one of the things that I, I wanted to confirm. And, and this is our mission, really, is just that we, we, we also get, you see, we get a lot of um, global affiliates and partners and professional clubs to help us kind of um, bridge the gap in terms of knowledge on football, um, knowledge on the development of how much it takes to get to that level. Um, so that's what we do. And that's why I kind of put it at the end, end here. We're not, Aspire, I wouldn't, Aspire is not so much of a club as it is a culture. And that's kind of one of the main things I think is, is important is that, you know, one of the main differences, we're not these like super trophy uh, seeking club. We have won trophies, no doubt, but the focus is really on developing a good environment, typically to what you, almost like I'd say, continuing what you have at home and bringing it back on the field. That's really been our focus, so. Um, all right, so uh, again, I, I kind of go through what our values are, our values, really like i said a lot of the players and and you'll see that maybe engaging with them um is that where our focus really is on their leadership we we focus on that we talk about that goal setting skills and um communication is a big one 
Uh, we, we'll talk about a little bit about what we did there recently and time management, you know, so we, you know, we talk about how they should be on time for certain things because all these things are very important for them to deal with when they get to being a professional. It has nothing to even do with football, honestly. It could be day to day. Um, we deal with this at our jobs every day. So it's something that they need to understand and, and get that uh, confirmation, in my opinion, at even at this early age. Like I said, clubs aren't really focused on that. They're focused on just football. I think for us, we're saying you need to you need to take care of yourself first before you can take care of football. So that's how we've always approached every situation, um, every game, everything, even uh, situations where if someone is talking, uh, you know, not communicating well to another player, we'll rather take that player out and discuss that with them rather than, I, I don't care if we just scored a goal because of it. It's that lesson that's going to help them understand what they're doing wrong. So those are the things that we, we take uh, a pride in. And, and then it just kind of bleeds into who they are as a, as a person. So, um, okay. So some of the um, success stories, like I said, I, I think not many, uh, you know, not many actually know this. I just, players do, but it's good to kind of uh, help folks, I guess, get a good understanding. So uh, I mentioned that we have a proven development um, of players who have not only developed in their football skills, but also, uh, helped, you know, with the help of their parents and teammates become a well-rounded social individual. So we've, we've definitely had players that have, you know, been through the system and have moved on, played in college, and, and I'm going to explain a little bit about that. So we've had a 100% graduation rate uh, from a 2018, 2019, and 2020 of recent. Um, what that means is uh, initially when I started this a while back, um, now uh, let's talk about this. Aspire itself is about three, four years old or four years old as an aspire now we've been uh a club even before that and 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 obviously uh just on the phone even before that for about almost eight years now i was trying to remember the time it's almost like seven eight years now as a club just even with the youth when they're like 10 and 11 years old so that was always been then our focus was really just getting them into into soccer but then as the time progressed we realized there's a need to uh get you into football that are uh, well, mainly had lack of funding. That was one of the main things that we're trying to um, uncover because, you know, we realize that um, there's a gap in this country for um, basically being able to play with, uh, without the, with the need right now they have where you have to pay a lot of money to play football. And um, where I come from, we're pretty much everyone that is in the club uh, just because we're all international. We never had, to, there was never something that is ever had to do in whatever country we're ever in. It was never based on, on, on cost. So that's one of the things we wanted to change and you utilize help from partnerships and sponsors to help us um, do that as well as um, funding from the parents and stuff like that. So, um, so, and then it says all of our 2019 and 2020 senior class all got um, college offers. So mm -hmm. again, you could look at that as, um, you know, we're, we don't need to be mega large and we're never intended to be this super large uh, organization from that standpoint because we really care individually about each person. But to have a, a, a success rate that every single player from last year and this year uh, mm -hmm. all got college offers, I mean, that's, that's all I could ask for. And then there's even years coming up after that, right? Um, we, have a, we have a U11 group. Uh, well, we have a 2021 group, which most of you guys, our parents are, and my son's on there too. And we have a, um, we have a U11, and, uh, which, which kind of bleeds into almost seven years up. So we have a lot of um, age groups there. And then uh, also, we've actually had four players this, this year um, that are going to be playing professionally in August. So in August 2020, they go up to England. Uh, we arranged uh, we have a, basically a, a pathway that we create with them with, with different clubs in England, as Finland, Netherlands, literally Spain, uh, that we've been kind of working through to get them opportunities to get trials. And you see the ages there, 17 and 19, to go ahead and go over there. So we have players like one of the players who, who graduated, who I mentioned, I mean, not graduated, but moved on to college, is going over to England for a club uh, in August. Um, and then the, usually what we do with that is, um, you know, to stay true to our model, 
uh, we're not just, he's not just pulling himself out of school. In other words, whenever they do something like that, they have to register for online school, online college. So they basically get their degree while they're playing uh, the, in, in whatever club they are, they're playing in. In fact, to get even into the, to get in the country to, to play there long term, they have to be on some form of visa. So what we use is a student visa as the opportunity for them to do that. And that goes for even if they wanted to play in Germany, Finland, or whatever. But we basically package a, a film and a highlight and basically send those to a lot of various player agents and uh, club academy coaches that we know. And that's kind of how that, that matures. So we have four of those that are going up uh, in August here. Um, so, And then obviously some folks may know, obviously we had the successful uh, Chelsea Academy coaches that came here last uh, summer. They were again supposed to come this summer, but we had canceled it uh, obviously due to the pandemic a while back. Uh, but we have a lot of other clubs too. We have Chelsea, we have so many other clubs, Chelsea, Tottenham, uh, Hitafe that all want to, Arsenal that wants to do something very similar. Uh, but we just haven't been able to figure out, you know, where the slots of times are that we'll do it, but we'll, we'll continue to do this. Um, and if, if some of you guys remember when we did it for our Spire players, it's a free, see, it's a free week. There's nothing that parents need to pay for it. And that was just something that we had uh, established as if you're within Aspire, you do not have to pay to come to this camp. Uh, we even invited clubs, other clubs, um, like local smaller clubs that had, like I said, we said five players, if you want, come in there for free. Um, and that's really kind of, like I said, what we were about. We were never about trying to just, you know, we could easily have charged them X amount, $500 just to come to a camp. But we said, no, come and get the experience, you know, get something from it. And they had clubs that came in and, and brought players in, took a week, and they enjoyed themselves. And that's kind of what we're trying to, um, you know, instill. And then in terms of Partnerships and sponsorships. So we have a partnership. Uh, we actually have a sponsorship with Joma where they give us, uh, so for jerseys that are typically $50, $55 normally, they give us at almost 20 something dollars for a jersey uniform and everything. Um, and that, that was actually a connection that we had through a club uh, called Hatafe. It's a professional club in England. I mean, sorry, in Spain. And they had put us in touch with the folks in, in, at Joma to get this discount. So that's something that we work with with them. Uh, they distribute out of Florida, but they're based in uh, Spain. Mm -hmm. And so five is an indoor soccer facility. Here we have a, a, a signed contract um, partnership with them where we get a discounted rate on the hourly rates at the facility. Um, do we use it a lot? I would say not as much because the, the timings in which they have it is usually from nine to four. Uh, is the times that we have availability to, do, to, to use it at a very discounted rate. But at the times in which those are tough times because during the school week, typically people are in school or by four o'clock comes, that, that doesn't really help us um, as much. So we use it from time to time, but not as often as, as some folks would see. NCSA, we're going to talk about that some more later on, but that's a huge, I would say that is the hugest thing that we've um, partnered up with that company we get a huge discount <laughs> typically their their um their fee is like over a thousand plus dollars a year for a club uh we get it at a very discounted rate at i think, believe like 500 something that we pay annually but you'll see what it provides to the to the students and players that is allowing them to get various college offers uh psc is a uh, company called pro soccer consulting uh, you may see it sometimes on, on the player's jersey. That's one of the companies that we use. They're based in England, but they, um, they help players get trials and things like that here. So you can actually do a, a pro soccer consulting in Florida. They could, and then they have scouts from Sweden, all these different clubs that, that, that come there. Um, I don't think we use them as much. Uh, I, actually, I don't, we haven't really used them that much at all because um, it just the opportunities really hasn't come up. We rely a little bit more on our own created network that we've created over time. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and that's just something that I've always started. When I started this um, academy, it was, okay, yes, get them into sports and whatnot. But I've always had, a, um, I wanted to sort of make sure there was an end goal to it. So whether it meant starting talking to college coaches, whether it meant starting to college institutions, whether it meant starting to um, DC United, I, these different places and see 
where the opportunities were. Um, and then it come to find out overseas was the best options for us to partner up with, with different folks because they were more interested. Uh, that's the best way I could say it. Um, and so we've been able to um, establish that as kind of part of our pathway system, if you would. All right, so what have we been doing recently? Um, let me just uh, move this over here. So, I'm um, sorry. Um, recently, especially during the pandemic, um, like I said, it, it's, it's hasn't been great, obviously everyone being out and everything like that, but we have been very busy. We've, we've actually taken a lot of the time to um, expand our network. Um, so we've we've reached out to so many different um, colleges, college coaches, um, you know, established partnerships with several clubs and agents in, like I mentioned, UK, Germany, Finland, Netherlands, and there's Spain. And, uh, you know, we've had, uh, we just had a lot of success just establishing a, a good um, uh, sort of network so that, again, maybe even if it's not these players now, uh, it's players that are coming up that they want to look at. But even the players now, I've had a lot of uh, great feedback of folks saying, well, yeah, let me know when they're available because they look good enough, you know, for us. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that we're trying to do um, to establish those pathways. Uh, just a couple comments. So we, we have this Instagram and YouTube series where we do uh, these. It's like a podcast. It's, not really, it's kind of like a podcast, but we interview various. Um, it's called a pathway series. And we have it on our on our um, uh, Instagram and YouTube, but basically what it and Facebook, actually. But what it does is um, we're interviewing college coaches. Um, we're interviewing college players, even players that we had moved on to college um, and do and pro coaches and pro players and having them tell their experiences in life and how things are for them so that folks can understand what it is like to be in those positions, what it is to expect. Um, and that's something that we have going on right now. We have a, like a bunch. We've interviewed literally almost everybody from every area. That was my goal to kind of go through everyone almost in every country we've done. Uh, we've done some folks in Brazil. I know uh, Justiani's on. We've done um, uh, some folks in Netherlands, everywhere. We've literally done everywhere um, and, and just kind of get a good understanding of folks. Another good thing is it's different um, uh, It's different careers. So you may have, we have did sports medicine, so we spoke to someone from there, and we're just trying to get everyone to even understand the different um, career paths that are out there. Sports management person from Manchester United. I mean, these are big places that are taking the time to talk to us uh, because honestly, they believe in the program. I, I just kind of, I have to give them what it is about because all these people don't really just say, yeah, I'll talk to anybody. You can't, they, they understand the purpose of it. So that's how we are able to kind of establish those connections and, and, and do those things. Um, NCSA, I'll talk about that again more. I'll show you a demo about that in a second. But it talks about it allows players to interact with the coaches and the colleges and and show them highlights and a lot of folks are currently using that right now and you can upload your GPA and um, and start engaging and getting college offers. Um, the last thing that I have here is so uh, the players may not mention this, but we we because of that we are engaging with college coaches and, and things like that. We established. Uh, a series, or not series, it was just a session a couple weeks ago where we took all the players uh, on Zoom and we went over a presentation on literally how to communicate professionally. So we went over active listening, we went over um, uh, techniques of responding, how to talk to someone. Um, and, uh, you know, not, like a lot of the players, even, you know, they were, they know this because I told them is that sometimes when I'll talk to them, they'll be looking on the ground and they're looking all over and I'm like, are you, you know, let's engage in a conversation if we're going to have a conversation. So they understand that because other, at every other level you go to, uh, they look at that as, as frowned upon. So they need to be able to, they don't need to be as talkative as me per se, but they need to actually have a conversation. If someone asks them something, be able to tell them an answer. Um, think about it and tell them an answer. Don't, you know, be all over the place and things like that. And again, we're not talking about, accents and things like that we're more talking about just being able to collect your thoughts and then give them what you're looking to answer and things like that so that's what we spent um and we talk about not just doing it professionally we talk about doing this at home uh we talk about you know like i said my son's in the program sometimes you know i'll ask him to do something and he kind of uh, he just makes a grunt noise i don't know if that if he meant something or is he upset you saying yes or what are you saying you know 
So sometimes we just basically just go through how to even speak at home, you know, practice properly at home and, and uh, things like that. And also, we have a lot of folks even, especially now, going on job interviews. And we had just one person yesterday got an interview and he wrote me a, a text message saying, thank you for talking to him about, you know, how to talk to those people. So it's good. Um, okay, so the pandemic and the next steps. Um, in terms of the this- the next step. So our primary concern is safety, right? So, you know, we were told by the leagues that we were the first club that uh, back in March, we said, we're done. We're not going to play. We're good. Um, Because we pulled out of the league. We pulled out of the league right away in March when I even heard any notice of this, because it didn't sound like it was going good. Um, The league, I remember the league back in March was saying, why, why am I pulling out so early? Doesn't, you know, we don't know yet. And they were trying to hang on. I was like, nah, this doesn't look good. So we pulled out, um, and then we canceled our our uh, our Chelsea summer camp, and just you know this is where we are. So that's really our focus. We're not trying to rush players back or rush the team back or anything like that. Um, it's important to have the kids get into activities, but I think what we're doing is potentially looking at maybe I know a lot of clubs are back and and trying to figure things out, but. Um, I would almost want to say let them figure that out first and then we'll take three to four weeks to see where we want to do in terms of practicing and things like that. So we may not um, do that right away, but it's something that we would look to do and we may extend that. It may not be for three to four weeks. It may be further than that, depending on what, what comes up. So um, yeah, so that's it. So as much as everyone wants, the players want to get back, I think it's, it's until we hear more concrete news as to what's happening, I don't think it's in our best interest, especially when we have um, parents at home and, you know, they feel like they're okay, but, um, you know, there's parents, siblings and things like that. And people coming from all different areas, uh, taking public transportation to get to practice and things like that. That's not something we want to encourage at this particular point. Um, but I want to give it at least three to four weeks before we even consider even a, uh, a session that's, um, like I said, it could be a distant session where they're more working on their long ball skills or, trapping at it you know we wouldn't jump right into um you know tackle tackle practices and things like that until we hear something more um and or we may not even do it for a month a month or more who knows we'll just kind of gauge it in terms of the leagues though um the league themselves and and this kind of even confirms what i've been what i really feel is is going to happen i they're asking to register and they'll give us our money back if it doesn't happen and just that, even that uncertainty alone lets me know that they don't know what's happening. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I decide we're not going to, I don't think it's in our best interest to register for a league this season. Um, but I'll show you where we're, we probably come out better in the end. Um, because a league, what, when we look at what the end goal is, and, and I put down there our focus, our end goal is really, especially for the 2021s, the folks that are graduating 2021, is really to get into college. I mean, let's look at it. It was never really to win a title this year or any i mean the the players may want that but at the end of the day for as parents we want to make sure that they get into college and they have opportunities and whatever it is um so a league itself is just letting them play to have fun or whatever but um with the with the the environment not being set or um you know safe i guess uh and the league not sure if they're having a league we're not going to push the envelope and say, yes, we'll register for a league knowing very well it's not safe. Uh, so that's something we're going to hold off on for sure. But what we are going to look at is um, our tournaments. So those are things that are, we're thinking they're, they're popping up around. They have them actually going on in August, November, all the way up until 2021. Um, we definitely wouldn't be doing anything in August. Uh, we're, we are looking at some and see how things are maybe in September, November timeframe, see how the environment is. Uh, but those are something that we're probably more geared towards in which we'll have big tournaments that have um, a more impact because yes, their college recruits there, that's number one. And so we'll probably be able to uh, do at least two to three within the calendar year of 2020 and 2021. Um, so that's something that we're looking at doing. Um, so we'll probably more practice the gear up for a tournament as opposed to um, you know, uh, and we'll practice as, as needed. But what I'm saying is we would, wouldn't actually be doing a league every Saturday driving back or getting them back and forth, you know, in, in a van going to games every week. I don't, that, that, that is, we have to hold on that for right now. I think considering 
um, how the environment is. But, but to a particular event and then leaving the event, I think that makes more sense um, because it's a one day thing. Obviously, we'll, if they go to a tournament, for example, maybe they play, but then on the side, they're you know, social distancing or however you want to do it. Um, but again, I, 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 a lot more has to happen, I think, from the environment before I give it the go ahead. Um, and I'd rather more focus, even, even I'd be more willing to do more of our internal team practices uh, than jump right into a league or a, t or a big event with a lot of people. I think it's it, too much is out there um, and a lot of uncertainty. All right, so uh, NCSA. All right, so NCSA, as I mentioned, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go through a quick demo of what that is. But uh, just understand that every single player and the folks on the call are already doing a good job already in terms of their 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 um, their players. But every all the players have all the information they need to start looking at colleges, engaging with coaches, um, and um, I've already been discussing with college coaches already about players. They've been reaching out to me, um, and then already we've had several players just even in the last because literally in the last three weeks we've we've ramped up our efforts on this. And this was something that I wanted to do because I was just having side conversations with different coaches and they're, because their seasons, the season's kind of up in the air. I kind of heard through the tones of their voices that they don't have much to do right now anyway. So I said, you know what, let's ramp up our recruiting efforts, start talking to them. And sure enough, they're just at home looking at people's films and talking to me about them and, and giving them offers. So just even in the last three weeks, we've had, um, even folks that graduate, we had folks that graduated this year that were already planning to just sit out a year or go to Montgomery College and just go that route. Come to find out after having these discussions with um, the coaches, they're getting, one guy already got four college offers. Uh, he's choosing one. And then we had, like I said, when I said all the 2020 class, so all the 2020 class now have college offers. So they are now able to now fill out their forms and submit now they're heading they, what, what they thought three weeks ago they were going to either sit out or go to Montgomery College now they have a four-year college just stepping into and that was just just show you how quick these things are moving because the coaches want players and even some of the coaches they were expecting players to come even internationally but what happened is because of the pandemic they can't come so there's an opportunity there for the 2020 the 2020s um, the problem though with 2020s is that they may not even have a season until the spring but um, you know, it's, it's at least they're in a college getting, um, you know, getting uh, good funding to go there. We'll, and I'll even show you some of the examples of a particular player that not recently, but last year got in and how to break down the cost for the, for the parents. I think that's very important to understand, um, you know, that. Uh, and then said so for 2021s, people already engaging with the, the coaches, already engaging with the players, uh, texting them. And um, the way this typically works is, the coaches want to hear from the players. Uh, I, I told the players the same thing. I can guide you and give you all the tools to do what you need to do. But it's, you know, the, the, at the end of the day, the coaches want to hear you write up your quick, uh, you know, your, 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 your letter to them and what you feel about yourself. Uh, I can, me telling them looks like I'm selling them to you. Or, you know, like I'm sort of like, yeah, yeah, this guy's good. And I don't want to do that. So it's, it's their best interest to write a letter. Uh, to them, and they're doing it. So it did, I'll show you what the program looks like, um, and they're doing a very good job of it. Um, but yeah, again, our goal is really to have everyone ha uh, have an opportunity, especially for the, and that's for the 2020s. For the 2021s, I really can't see just even discussing, I was literally thinking about it, there's not a player on that team, the 2021s team, that should not have, all have a college offer. No way. That team is, that 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 group is way too strong. So there's not even a question. I know just individually, even working with a lot of the coaches, every single player should have an offer. I really even have players that are, you know, maybe not even as strong as they were already getting engaging with the college coaches. So, um, you know, so that's that's something too. Uh, before I get into the 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 process of scholarships and 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 all that stuff, that's 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 going to be kind of where I think a lot of parents want to know about. But let me just take a quick second and show you um, what NCSA looks like and what each player has um right now all right one second
Okay. All right. So this is NCSA. Um, I'll show you. There's an app for this. So each player has the app, but they also have it in um, on the website as well. But what it is, right? It's it's a tool that allow every player to start looking up colleges. Um, I'll give you an example. So for example, they could go here. They could say, okay, what are some of the Division three schools in? Um, they can do public or private. But let's say they just want to interested in figuring out what schools are in Maryland, um, you know, as a start. Now they could have availability to go literally anywhere in the nation. So that's another thing too. And then they could, you know, they could say, okay, well, what if, let's say the cost is, um, you know, 20,000. Let's see what that looks like. And they could, a lot of different changes they could change here. Enrollment size, they can do division one, division two, division threes. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about what some of those are, because some folks may not know what the, what the NAIA and all that stuff is. But um, so, so let's say I just pick Maryland and I pick a uh, tuition of 20,000 or less and I hit search, right? So it's going to come back with all the results for schools. In this case, there's only two schools in Maryland at division three level that is under $20,000, right? Um, that at a division, at division three, three level so Sam Rears College where I actually played I played there um, and uh, Salisbury University now what they can do is from here they can literally come here and hit contact coaches and from here it brings up like an email template that allows them to uh, write the coaches saying and we give them a template we prepare them with a template uh, and then they could add their own bits to it but it typically would start off something like saying you know uh, you know very polite very um, professionally but good you know like good afternoon good whatever it is um coach blah 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 um you know I'm very I reviewed your program very interested in joining your program and you know maybe go through a little bit about them I play here and um and my GPA is this and things like that so those are the kind of things that they would deliver to the coaches the coaches get it and then they'll respond back to the to the athlete um through either the 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 system here through email or they'll even text them or call them or however it is. Um, and one thing I always tell the players is that these, when you're emailing these coaches, I know a lot of people, um, I'd say a lot, cause I definitely know there's a, a myth out there may have made it seem as if it's very complicated or it's, you know, like it's a, it's a kind of like a myth to get to these coaches, but really these coaches want to learn, want to, um, get to know the players. It's not just a one-time thing. It's never, they kind of want to know, okay, so how are you, like one, one kid, the coach texts him three, four other days to say, so how's everything going? You know, so it's, it's they're trying to um, learn about the player to ensure that they're not um, like a nutcase when they come into the program. So that's kind of one of the things that they have to be um, willing to do. And again, for the most part, everyone is really doing that. They're I told them how to be responsive to the coaches because that's one thing that uh, they can't stand is for, cause they're dealing with everyone sometimes think that they're dealing with them and them only. Uh, but really these coaches are the same for the same player position. They could be talking to 15 other people just like that. Um, but as the more conversations go on, you can see where the interest is and then they'll start getting college offers. In the case of the 2020s, we they didn't have that much time because they're trying to make sure the kids are applying for the schools now. So it's literally them looking at the, the film, talking to the players, talking to me, and then literally giving them the offer uh, right then and there. So that, that's something that really happens this late into the, um, into the year, because usually that happens um, throughout the year. But typically around, I almost want to say October, November is when they kind of want to finalize on yeah, the schools would want to finalize and send them an offer or send them um, something that lets them know that they um, that they are interested in having them. Um, so yeah, so again, I could um, you know I could have done uh, you know like Division Two, um, and I'll talk about what NAIA is, and then I'll just do um, again in Maryland or let's, let's let's say I pick another state. I don't know um, North Carolina, for example. Um, and I hit search again, same thing will come up. I could come here and I could see all the schools that are, that are available within the division two, I guess it brings up a division three in this case, but it gives you a good opportunity as to what that is. Now as a coach or, or as the um, owner of the group, I can come here now in the dashboard and this is gonna be very interesting is that I could see 
Um, let me see here one second. Uh, one sec. I can see, right. So I can see all of the activity of where everyone is, right? So I would, um, let me just sort by send um, here. So what this shows is all the different players in um, our academy and their activity. So uh, this guy's sent over 260 emails to different coaches, which is uh, interesting. Um, I actually did tell them to don't, you know, literally, I know you may have favorite schools, but go ahead and start getting, uh, just send them out, you know, get your template ready and send them out because you will get more offers that way. And then you have more choices that way. And a lot of times you'll be even be able to weigh um, or, you, you know, use one offer and see if it's better than another one. So they're just sending these out. And interestingly enough, so this player here, he's a 2020, he graduated in 2020. Um, actually, actually interesting about this player. He actually graduated um last year early he graduated 16 um but he took a year off and then now he's coming back uh to to do it at 17 to to, to um do it and he sent this many emails he has four college offers um and I, you know he i would say he's not even the strongest player we've had you know so he's um so that's, that's kind of information that's out there so we encourage folks to send out the emails and then i could see for example if i go into his profile I could see um, things like, uh, once it loads here, I could see the schools that he's applied to and who has responded to him. So I could see that he's, um, uh, sorry, he sent three, to, sorry, he sent three to this school and they've been, they've received it, they're, they've viewed it in some cases and, um, you know, again, to all these different schools. And the school that I think he's ending up at, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is this school right here. He got a, it's a division two school and he has a sports scholarship for that school as well as some other stuff that, that I'll explain in a second. But it, it's just an opportunity. Again, they, this is, this, they couldn't have made it any easier for players. When I was doing this long, we never had, literally we were writing, you know, you had to like write it, like, you know, write it out, send an email, send a, a letter in and hope that you hear something back. They made it so much easier for players nowadays. And um, it's interesting. That's what I was telling the players. It's interesting. A lot of big clubs aren't even using a system like this. They're just sort of, you know, leaving up to the players or the students or the parents to figure it out. And it's crazy to me. You know, that's why I said it. You got to look at are they in it for the players um, as opposed to just, you know, helping them win whatever it is. Because really, if they were, this is a fairly simple thing to do. You just have to work with them and set this up and let the players and the parents work with the with the coaches i mean college coaches and then you work um as, a, as an organization to help them uh get the opportunities that's really the focus so that's so that's available to them and like i said this player has sent out to several schools in the, in and around maryland pennsylvania as you see kentucky everywhere california and um they're getting hits and looked and and things like that and they're sending their film so this idea of the that they need to be at the games and all that stuff, I'm telling you, it's not as much as it uh, that that may have been. That is still the case. So a lot of coaches do come to sometimes games, especially tournaments and things like that. But it's not the only way. There's a lot of schools out there that just need players based on the film. They want to even. I've had coaches that really don't even care so much even how great the player is. They want to know more about their academics. How are they as a person and things like that um so yeah and a lot of times you'll find that the coaches and just in general if you have and i'll talk about this more as we go on into the the financial part of it for the for the parents but the the, the better the academics it's so much easier for the coaches the coaches actually looking i have no doubt the coaches are sorting this looking first by the the gpa and trying to figure out who has a high gpa and who looks decent on film and there's a number of reasons why they do that because it saves them money and be able to them and the player money and i'll talk about that in a second um in this case this this person here has a 4.0 gpa and yeah he had four offers because of it um and again would i say he's the strongest player absolutely not you know not even close so it would be interesting um that's why i always tell the players make sure that your 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 grades are good because you'll get more offers that way 
All right, so I'll switch out of NCSA. Let me stop sharing the screen and we'll go back uh, one second here. Um, before I go into the um, into the sec into this real quick, um, let me just ask if anyone has. Okay. Okay. So does anyone have any questions so far on any of this stuff um and anything so far no okay all right so um so what i'm showing here is the di different divisions out there right so um so there's a division one I'm, I'm sure folks must have heard about that division one and division two and division threes and uh, another division not many people know about is the NAIA division, which is an um, interesting division. And then there's also junior college, right? So just understanding the scholarship layout, again, uh, a lot of folks wouldn't, under wouldn't know this. I didn't actually even know this until a year and a half, maybe a couple years ago, after discussing with coaches. So the, the idea, there's always this, this myth that was out, out there saying, Oh, that player is on there as a full scholarship because you would think that's what happens. That oh, person goes to college division one, you get most scholarship and you get a full scholarship for sports. That's actually not entirely true. What happens is these colleges, like for example, division one, the schools are limited for soccer are limited to nine point nine max uh, full scholarships. So in other words, they can only give out nine point nine or no, let's say nine or ten if you want to call it. 10 full scholarships for a roster size of 26 plus. So not everybody that's playing division one has a college scholarship, college scholarship. Um, again, I used to think that was the case, but I obviously understanding what the rules are, the rules are for division one, they don't do that. Division two, the exact same thing. Uh, division three doesn't offer college scholarships, which I know that because I played division three um, sports scholarships and NAIA division actually offers 12 uh scholarships uh for that for that um for that uh for that group and i have division naia almost like a bottom division it really isn't there's a lot of teams at naia that could beat a lot of division one teams it's just that there it's a whole it's not an ncaa which everyone knows it's it's a i forgot what it, it's a different group altogether it's and it, you're you know you get scholarships just like everybody else where there's a school that we have here in maryland called washington adventist a lot of the players already went there for um, for a uh, college ID. That's the NAIA school. We have one player already there. He's a full scholarship. He has nothing to worry about there. Um, so it's just understanding that. So the, just what does that mean, the 9.9? .9? So in that case, what they're looking, what the coaches are looking at is basically ensuring that because they, they need to have, they basically need to spread this scholarship out across 26 players. So we'll go through, you know, the grants and, and all different things that are going to happen next. But when they get those, um, they're trying to figure out who to give that full scholarship to. Sometimes it's usually a lot of international players that come over, they give it to them. Or players here that are very, very good, they'll give it to them. But then again, you're counting down your numbers. So what they'll try to do is give 0.5 to this player, 0.5 to that player. And, and just kind of have them manage their, their thing that way. So that's usually at Division One, Division Two, and uh, NAIA Division. Like I said, Division Threes, they don't offer that, but they do have their own institutional grants um, based on different things like merit, you know, and academics that they'll give um, to, <clears throat> sorry, to players. Okay, we're winding up here now. So um, just a no, this is just an average cost. I uh, don't mean to scare the parents, but it's the, the truth of what the cost of school is right now. I mean, it's crazy, you know. So uh, a private four-year, uh, an average is 32. I'll even say that's a little low considering. That's an average, though, because I've definitely seen schools 38, 42, $52,000 worth uh, for schools. And you, you see, the obviously, the difference between in-state and out-of-state. Um, and a two-year college is like a junior college that's out there. Now, um, one thing I, I do want to make note for, for, for parents, at least, to understand is that there is a junior college program that was signed, a bill that was signed in 2018, effective 2019 on, is that there's this program called the Promise Program. It, uh, it allows, it's in the state of Maryland, actually 19 states, including Maryland, 
but if the family household income is 150,000 uh 150 max 150,000 they can att they get $5,000 towards um a junior college now if you look at it what they're considering is almost like a free tuition because junior colleges even Montgomery colleges I think $4,000 so you get you would get to attend there for free for two years and that was the intent they want to get more um more students into into school rather than just leaving high school because that's a that's actually a main thing in fact when i first met some of the kids that are in the in the academy now uh when i first met them a while back they were like yeah i'm just gonna finish school and go work and i'm like ah uh, no <laughs> i think we need to revisit that and and that's kind of things that i've been trying to instill in them and, and their parents and understanding that there's more to it than that there'll be a lot more opportunities if they take that next step um, to do that. They could do both. They could work and go to school or whatever you want to do. So um, that's been changed now. Like I said, everyone is fully aware of what the importance is of school. And so just understand that, that a promise program allows that for junior colleges. Um, now I would say, our, I said our students, players qualify for various scholarships and grants. Um, and this is now getting into the, to the parent side in terms of the financials. So again, information that I, I know my dad, when he were doing this, had no clue. We didn't, we thought we just had to pay for school just like everybody else, uh, because that's what we were used to doing, um, you know, just traditionally. But in the system in America, actually, it's set up for the students to come out good out of the situation if you take the right steps. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about. So, all right. So what this is, it's uh, something I created I, uh, just a couple of days ago. Or yesterday, actually, I was on the phone with various college financial aid offices just to confirm a couple things um, to present this this information. Um, but it's right. I mean, what it is, it's there is various scholarships, grants, and then obviously student loans that our uh, students qualify for. And I'll go through what some of those are. But the good news is you don't have to, as a parent, go look for each one of these grants and whatnot. It's a simple form. Uh, it's 30 minutes. It's, it, it goes off of your, if you have your tax information from the year before or the current year, whatever it is, it'll use that as the basis to determine. Um, it's called a FAFSA form. Um, it's an online form. And I think you, um, it, each state has their own, uh, each state and then each institution um, have their own deadlines. And I'll explain what that is. But you fill the form out. And they basically, the school, you, there's nothing to worry about. The school, the, the, the federal government would figure out what, based on your academics, your, your income of your family, all those different things, what do you qualify for? Okay. So, and it will give you a report uh, at the end, which tells you what, how much money you got off and what you can, um, and, and where you need to go after that. So, uh, there's academic, there's the, well, sports scholarship I talked to you guys about earlier, which is something that, um, the coaches will even work with the player and tell the player, listen, I can give you 10,000. We just, one just happened last week. I'll give you $10,000 towards a academic a sports scholarship. So the player, uh, now the schools, I think roughly 32,000. Um, but he players now able to use that 10,000 towards that and then fill out the FAFSA to see what other grants, cause he has a 4.0. So then now his, his, his academics grants is going to factor in, academic scholarships is going to factor in. There's, there's grants that are going to be applied from the federal government, the state, and the schools that will reduce that cost significantly. <clears throat> and, um, and at the end of it, there is a remaining amount typically that is called a subsidized loan um, that the students can take or an unsubsidized loan. And I'll talk about the differences between those two. And then there's a direct plus loan. Um, which which they could take as well. The parents have to take can take, um, and then there's a private institutions like banks uh, and then like Sally Mae and those things like that, which the, which the student could take. Now, um, the reason why I want to mention these a little bit more. So again, when you when you go through your FAFSA, at the end of it, it will tell you that there's a portion of it that's subsidized and there's a portion that is of unsubsidized. What the subsidized means is. Um, that portion of the of whatever it is it could be let's say it's five thousand dollars five thousand dollars that's subsidized means that the student does not need to pay that back they, they basically pay they don't have to pay anything while in school and it's interest free until after they leave school okay that's subsidized so the government is taking care of all that you can you don't have to pay anything until you finish school unsubsidized is basically uh 
the same you, while you're in school, you have to pay something and you could defer it. You could say, you know, the student, could, this is on this, these are all student um, driven. So the students can say, you know what, I'm going to hold and not pay till next year. The only difference with that, though, is that the interest does accrue every year. Um, so you end up paying more in the long run. But, you know, it's something that they uh, they could choose to do for whatever it is. A direct plus loan is now a parent driven loan. A parent has to apply for it. Um, so you can do either or. So, I mean, with student, if a student does this, uh, there may be some extra costs. The parent could do a direct plus loan. Now, the only thing I would say, um, you know, to, to understand about direct plus loan is um, the thing is, it's, it's, it goes against the parents' uh, credit history, credit checks, and all this other stuff, right? And, and if for some reason the parent does not qualify for the direct plus loan based on whatever, um, uh, based on the, uh, the credit history or whatever, the student automatically gets a little bit extra in the subsidized loan. So if you, let's say you got denied or something, then they'll give $3,000 or so to the subsidized loans to the student and say, student handle it. My, uh, my take after talking with a lot of these um, financial aid offices, as much as us as parents want to help with the funding for the, the student, because you know you, as a parent, you wanna pay for, you always say, yeah, I'm gonna pay for school. The thing is, the system is set up directly for the students to, like I said, not to, it's a, it's a, you literally have to take advantage of this. So it's a responsibility on the students to, uh, again, not have to, there's no credit checks on them. There is no, um, there is no penalty for delay or anything like that. The only thing they have to require to do each year is to fill out a new FAFSA form each year. Every year they have to do that. Now, um, as a parent, if you want to help with paying, the, you know, give it paying the bill itself, that's that's going to be a lot better in the long run um, for for the whole system because, like I said, it's for it's geared for the student to basically take on the loan ownership, do it, and then you can help pay that if you want to that way. As because, like I said, on at the end, there's no interest on some of these loans. Direct plus loans have have a high interest, just like almost any other loan. And whereas if the, the, the federal loans that the students take have very, very little interest, and in some cases with a subsidized loan, you're not even paying, there's no interest being accrued until they um, leave, leave school. And even then, when they leave school, they have, I think it's roughly six months to even start paying it back. So it gives them time to find a job. And those bills are usually like $300 a, a month. Um, so obviously it's almost like taking a responsibility of a, ownership of a car. And this is assuming that they've, you haven't paid anything throughout the year, you know? So, so it's a lot of positives in looking at it that way. And I think in some cases it helps the student um, have responsibility. You know, they have something to pay. They need to, um, you know, or, or, or responsible to know when the dates are and what is, what is owed, what is due and things like that. So I think it's a little bit of maturity that happens with the student um, for sure. And I, I definitely would be, doing it even even in my case with, with my son is at least looking at that I'll help him pay whatever needs to be paid but um, the system is set up so that they're not there's nothing that's going to happen to them no they're not penalized there's nothing that um, that that is 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 wrong on their end it's just responsibility and managing their their the budget as you go on a private loan uh, is like like I said if there's some extra that, could, that needs to be done there's things that the students could take on which is Sally May loan which is um, again another student loan. It's a private funded loan. You still have to. It's no different than what I talked to you about an unsubsidized loan, where you are um, the student has to pay that while in school. It's a minimal amount. They can defer it if they want to for another year. Uh, but again, you have to be careful with that because the interest does accrue. Um, and then banks, which is just like your local banks, it's kind of your last resort. I don't even think you you don't really want to do that unless you really have to. Um, but you'd be surprised. A lot of parents who did not know some of this information would have just gone to the local bank and just done it there. But it's bad because it's a high interest rate um, and its system is not really set up to, to do it that way, but that could be something that if someone wants to do, they could do. Um, any questions on that before I share something else? Okay. So I have, I, I'll, I'm not gonna go through these as much, but these are just some definitions I was going through, just so parents will have it. You get a, a, a link to this slide deck also when you're done. 
but it gives you just some of the information of what I mentioned, what is a subsidized loan, what's unsubsidized, what's a direct loan, and what is uh, FAFSA. One of the things that I would want to say about the FAFSA form, though, is that the, um, it can, okay, so there is a, uh, there is a federal deadline for it, there's a state deadline for it, and then there is a school deadline for it. What that means is, um, the way the FAFSA works is, the earlier you get it in, uh, the more funding you can get. It's, a fir it's actually a first come first serve process, which is a little strange you would think. Um, but really the way they work is, if you apply earlier in the process, they'll, they'll have more funding to give you, uh, the, the student, for you know academics and different things like that so it's in the best interest to know when these dates are and apply um, now the opening date if I'm not mistaken so when I say there's three dates there is a federal date uh, which is I, uh, if I remember correctly and I'll, I'll get you parents th these dates but um, I believe you the earliest you could apply for let's say for in this case a lot of parents are for, here for 2021 um, you the earliest date you could apply is I believe it's October of 2020 this year right um, for the next year um, that doesn't mean that you can't do it in December or January or whatever it is because as a state the, the, the that's, a, that's a federal um, deadline that's to get federal funds let me go with that way that's to get federal funds and grants the state deadline is actually um, a little bit further out. I can't remember exactly what it is. And then the, stu the, the, the schools will have their own deadlines, which would be like say May of uh, next year. So you can get funding from these different sources, but for the federal side, it's as early as October, 2020, uh, for 2021. And then uh, that's why you, and you can also put how many, how, if you, even if there's schools that you were interested in, but you have not been accepted to, you can put it all in a FAFSA form and they'll tell you how much you qualify for, for this school versus that school and things like that. And you can always add another school later on and things like that. So that's the thing about, to know about the FAFSA. All right, so we'll wrap last couple slides here. So here's an example of a player that, um, and this is an email I got from a coach uh, last year um, of a player that we had, um, you know, that he was planning to go to the, to the school. And the tuition, um, and this is a player, again, who, who parents and everything thought that there was no chance of them being able to go to a big school out of state because um, it was too expensive. Um, but you'll realize that when you, once they get into the process, there's a lot that they could um, get out of it in terms of the funding. So this school itself was a $38,000 school. The school's called Keystone. Uh, I think I actually took a lot of the players up there, uh, I think, last year for a college ID. It's an example. So factors in the tuition, the meals, everything with everything is 38,000. After filling out the FAFSA form, the coach, and this is me getting it from the coach, um, and as a package is really what they, they qualified for what is called a presidential academic scholarship, and that's 13,000. Um, uh, this thing called Pell's grant is a federal grant, two federal grants they qualified for, uh, institutional grants, so this is one from the schools themselves, 3,700. Uh, coach slapped on a, a visit, uh, visit scholarship, something like that, referral scholarship, and total what he saw called free money is money that the student doesn't ever have to pay back at all. Nobody has to pay back the $24,000. Um, now, out of that, there's a remaining amount of what they call the subsidized loan and the upsubsidized loan, which we talked about earlier. And so the total loan amount was $5,500 for a school that was originally $38,000, right? So that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's just a matter of realizing that it's not as a daunting burden as people may think. Everyone's situation will be different, right? Because some people make more than some, some people make less than some. And some students aren't doing their academics as strong as some. But everyone's situation is different. But the best thing is to apply through FAFSA and see what you qualify for. Because at the end of the day, a school that was 38,000, as you see, comes down to 5,500. And with this 5,500, they can now take this and create, get like a Sally Mae loan or something like that and pay it, you know, gradually as they, as month to month if they want to, um, to pay for something like this instead of, uh, you know, taking on, um, you know, a burden or whatever. Interestingly, in this particular individual's case, even though it was 5,500, he did not end up going to this school. Uh, he ended up going to, like I mentioned, Washington Aventus, uh, which, which was offering him 
another a Maryland grant which covered up to this amount. So that's why he ended up not paying for school at all at a Division three school. So that's why I said there's so many opportunities out there. Um, the number itself may scare a lot of parents. What do you see? 38,000, 42,000 out of state. And these are out of state schools. This is a Pennsylvania school. And the person was here in Maryland. So, um, you know, you can, they can't, it's okay. It, it, depending on the situation, once they apply, let's see what they are qualified for, put down the schools that they might be interested in. And that's why it's good that they're starting the process now and see what coaches are interested in them if they want to play college and then being able to put those down on the FAFSA form to see what they qualify for. Because a lot of those schools float around 32,000 uh, and things like that. We have a couple of players that are going to school now in Pennsylvania which is uh, 30, I believe 35,000, and they're down to 3,000 to pay uh, a year. And they're going to, you know, these are kids, again, that really don't, never had the funding to go to school like that, but now they're able to be in a position where they can A, play, go to a very good school um, from an academic standpoint, as well as, um, you know, uh, be responsible for their loan and whatever it is. And again, their parents, their parents in some cases may not be able to help, but at least they're able to take on this burden. And at the end of it, when they're finished school, they can start paying back their loans like normal. Um, so that's so that's just something that, that I think needs to be, I, I don't think I have much after that, but um, that's just something that I think, um, you know, maybe some parents already knew that, but it's good to kind of get a reconfirmation to let other people know, because I know a lot of parents didn't even know this was out there. They were just assumed that they would just try and see if they could get into college, but in this case, they get full information about um, the different grants that are out there. You don't have to look at each grant and learn about them all that stuff. That's initially how I was start looking at this. But when I found out, really, the FAFSA will see what they qualify for. There's nothing to worry about. Just fill out the forms 30 minutes online, and um, you don't have to do it now. In this case, for 2021s, but coming up in uh, October, if you know, you could start seeing. You should start asking your um, your uh, I guess your sons in this case, what schools are being interested in, start working with them, seeing what, who have been interested in you, what are you looking to do? And then you can put those on the forms and you can always update the form anytime, but at least you can now see what they qualify for for money off. So you can plan ahead for 2021 um, and get into some of these schools that they love to go to, you know? So I just put up my information up there. Uh, pretty much everybody has my information for the most part, but, um, and again, I'll share these links with, uh, the link to this presentation with you and maybe we'll have another session again in uh, November maybe or sometime like that uh, when we kind of get some more information on dates if needs be but I just wanted to get a moment to bring everyone together and talk about college because again that's my focus as much as the players focus is on playing uh, I actually mm -hmm. <laughs> I really don't care I mean as much as I'd love for them to play I just want them to to get to get focused on college <laughs> so that's so that was pretty much um, it right there so yeah that's that's it um i know it's a lot but any questions on any of that stuff or any comments no uh, thank uh, you very much for what you do all right appreciate uh, it thank you coach and i appreciate it uh -huh. you know all the help i i appreciate what you're doing for nicholas and yep. when i need you to talk with nicholas to teach him a little bit better but thanks yeah. so much i appreciate all the information yeah. You give me a light now, what yeah. I can do for Nicholas. <laughs> you yeah. know, you give me a little light. Right. And, and Thank so you. as much as I share, share this information, share this information with the parents, I'm going to run through a similar session, uh, abbreviated version of this to the players, because they need to understand what they, what, what the responsibilities are that are coming for them and what they need to really understand that when I talk about grades, you're not just saying it, just say it, keep your grades up. You actually could be saving yourself thousands and thousands of dollars by doing it because it adds up even if it's five people may think oh it's just five thousand a year um but if you add that by by, by four that's twenty thousand dollars you know what i mean so exactly <laughs> so um so this is just we'll definitely hammer this home with the with the um players we do um uh player sessions on zoom um we'll probably have another one in another couple weeks with them but we do it every now and then and one of the next topics i'm going to bring up is this that they understand what is it that the parents are going through? Um, you, know. you know, another thing I think is if they got the boy, you told could they get a four uh, college to one of him. Mm -hmm. I think this, uh, they need, you know, they play with him. So they know yeah, how they his know. skill 
Yep. Então, if he, they find out, okay, it's four, mm -hmm. he's got a four just because his grades and the, right. you know, the GPA is good. Então, this means, okay, let me force myself. I can get a five. I can get six, you know? All the, the, these kids like challenge. Yeah. They want to be better than the other one. I think it's going to be great for them. Hey, I play because they all feel they pay better for better than anyone. Right. It's just they all feel. I Nicholas think he's the best. I always say to him, oh, "No, you know, have somebody else play better." Right. right but right. I think it's gonna be great for them to realize, like, okay, so he's. I I think I'm play better than him, but right. his GPA is better than mine. And let me focus on my GPA to get a more, do you know, college. Yep. That's how I feel. It's yeah, and we've been so so I've been um we have a little group chat on text. So I literally tell them every as soon as these things happen and you know they're in shock, wow, that you know, you know, how and so they, they definitely get up to speed on that, but for sure I agree. It's not good enough. And I've every coach will tell you this, it's not good enough to just be talented. You cannot you cannot get through their system because as much as they may want uh the next, you know, greatest player, if your grades aren't good, the admission office who the coaches have to answer to at the end of the day are the ones that determine whether you could come in or not. So that's, and, and, and obviously the FAFSA form determines how much you can get off. So uh, it's never, it's never good enough just to be really, really good and not mm -hmm. pull up your grade. So we definitely hammer it at home with the, with the, um, with the players again, for sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you coach right. so much. Thanks. All right. Thanks everyone. Hi, okay. hi question. Yeah, sure. Uh huh. What's up? Yeah, so th thank you for uh, about the college process, and that was, that was really excellent, informative. Uh, but I know I, since I joined the program, your video, uh, your Zoom late. Uh -huh. My question is, in terms of the this next, two box, uh, right? Of, uh, okay, Deshali Moslem. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, say yeah. Uh -huh. In terms of the practice uh, going on, going forward, in, in uh, like conditioning and things like that, I'm just wondering. If you have a program for them, like uh, yeah, I mean, the days they should uh, maybe do cardio, running, uh, weightlifting, and for them to kind of have like some type of schedule when they check off on things they've done to exactly to keep up so with them. coming out with and, and it's coming out at the end of next week. It's a, a, a off-season program that they're going to get a pretty much like you said a sheet that's going to go through what I expect every one of them to be doing uh, mm -hmm. leading up to into the season if we again having a season so it's going to be a checklist that goes through you know again if they can go outside i'll put optional um yeah. already there if they can't go, go jog then they could literally stand in place do you know uh, 100 mm -hmm. push-ups a day between the days of doing mm -hmm. 20 and then 20 and then 20 20 and get through it that way so we'll get through mm -hmm. we have a conditioning program and a off-season program that's coming out um not this friday it's next friday so oh, okay good. That. good good thank you thank you for all you do all right, no worries. All right, take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. All right, see ya.